When studying the approximate location of electrons within an atom, we can write electron configurations. But first, there are a few rules that we need to know in order to assign electrons to the appropriate orbitals. The first rule is called the off-ball principle. The off-ball principle states that electrons are placed in the orbitals that have the lowest available energy levels first. So if you notice in the picture on the right-hand side, a principal quantum number of n equals 1 will have the lowest amount of energy, so we'll want to fill up the orbitals in the first energy level first. Once those are filled up, then we move into the energy level with the principal quantum number of 2. Remember from previous slides that if n equals 2, there can be both s and p orbitals, so we'll fill up these s orbitals first, followed by the p orbitals. After all of those orbitals are filled, we can move up into n equals 3. When you have n equals 3, there are three different sublevels or shapes that can be found, s, p, and d. The trick here is that we would normally fill the 3s first, followed by the 3p, and you would think the next would be 3d. But if you look at an energy diagram, the 4s orbital actually has a lower amount of energy than the 3d, so we would need to fill that first. So the order would go 4s, then 3d, and then 4p. If we continue going, it starts to get really confusing and the numbers jump around. So an easy way to remember the order is called the diagonal rule. With the diagonal rule, you can start by following these arrows. Notice that we would start at the top and we would fill 1s first. After the 1s orbitals are filled, we would move over here to 2s and then we would fill those. After 2s is filled, we would move over here to 2p followed by 3s and then move over 3p followed by 4s scooting over would give us 3d followed by 4p followed by 5s and so on. So the diagonal rule or the off-ball principle tells you the order in which to fill the orbitals. The second rule is called the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons in the same orbital can have identical quantum numbers. So in order to avoid having electrons having identical quantum numbers, we have to take into account the spin. Remember, the electrons can be spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, and that would give them different quantum numbers of positive one-half or negative one-half, depending on their direction of spin. We normally represent that spin by arrows. For sodium, an atom of sodium has 11 electrons. So we need to start filling those in order according to the diagonal rule or the off-ball principle. So we're going to start off with 1s and put both of our electrons there spinning in opposite directions, followed by 2s with two electrons spinning in opposite directions. Next would come 2p. Remember that p's can point three directions, so you would actually have three different lines that would represent p, and each of those orbitals can only hold two electrons, so each of those arrows have to be pointing in opposite directions to represent the electrons spinning in opposite directions. Finally, after the 2p orbitals are filled, then we can go and fill up the 3s orbital. The last rule is called Hund's rule. Now, Hund's rule states that orbitals of equal energy levels are occupied by single electrons, all with the same spin, before any orbital can contain two. This is easier understood as the urinal principle. So if you imagine boys going into a restroom to use the bathroom, when the first boy enters the restroom, he will pick a urinal, usually on the end. The second guy comes in, and he will pick another urinal, but it will not be the one that is standing immediately next to the guy who entered first. He will skip a urinal. And so we're going to do the same thing with the electrons. When we fill up nitrogen, nitrogen has seven electrons. So we're going to start off here with the 1s. We're going to put our two arrows in there, one up, one down, because they have to spin in opposite directions. The next orbital is 2s, so one arrow up, one arrow down. But then when we fill the 2p, we want to space them out so that they can be as spread apart as possible before we start doubling them up. So we will have 2p with one electron in each orbital. So finally, we can use each of these three rules to write electron configurations. There are three different ways to write electron configurations. The first is called an orbital notation. Generally, throughout this whole screencast, the orbital notations have been the pictures that have either dashes or boxes to represent the orbital name, and then normally you'll see the orbital name written either underneath or on top of those boxes. You can see in the picture at the bottom that these are just partial orbital diagrams, but you can see the three S boxes and the three P boxes to represent those orbitals. 
You can also write an actual electron configuration, which shows you the number of electrons in each sublevel by using a superscript. Again, if you reference the picture at the bottom, the electron configurations look like a series of numbers and letters. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1 is the electron configuration for sodium. And finally, you can write something called a noble gas notation. This is really useful for elements that have a very large number of electrons because it saves you a lot of writing. In order to write the noble gas notation, you need to find out what the noble gas is that comes before the element on the periodic table. And you put that previous noble gas in brackets, and then you follow the brackets by the unique electron configuration for each element. So for example, with sodium, over here in brackets is the electron configuration for neon. So instead of writing that out, I can just write neon in brackets and then write just the 3s1 because that is the part of the electron configuration for sodium that is different than that of neon. The best way to learn how to write electron configurations is by practicing. So I'll show you a couple of examples of how to write those different types of configurations. First, draw an orbital diagram for oxygen. The very first thing we need to do is know how many electrons we have to account for. So you find oxygen on the periodic table, and you find that its atomic number equals 8. Well, remember, the atomic number is the number of protons. So if the number of protons equals 8, then in a neutral atom, the number of electrons will also have to equal 8. So I'm going to note that the number of electrons will be equal to 8. So I have to have 8 electrons in my orbital diagram. According to the off-ball principle, we have to start with the lowest energy level first, which is going to be a 1s. According to the Pauli exclusion principle, every orbital can hold two electrons, but those electrons have to be spinning in opposite directions. So I'm going to draw two arrows, one up and one down. Now after the 1s orbital is full, according to my diagonal rule, my next line is going to be 2s. Same thing, remember 2s can only hold two electrons, one up and one down. Go back to my diagonal rule, after 2s comes 2p. Now remember that p orbitals can actually point in three different directions, so I need to draw all three of those lines and notate that that is for 2p. And then the last rule, Hund's rule, says that when I'm placing the electrons on these orbitals, I want to place them one at a time so that all of the orbitals have a single electron before I double them up. If I count my total number of electrons, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I need one more electron to equal 8, and so I'll just add that electron here in that first orbital. And that is the orbital diagram for oxygen. Number two, write the electron configuration for argon. All right, so again, the first thing I need to do is figure out how many electrons. So I find argon on my periodic table, I see that argon has an atomic number of 18, and the number of protons and electrons are always equal for an atom, so the number of electrons here will be 18. Now when I'm writing an electron configuration, I'm essentially simplifying the orbital diagram into a series of numbers and letters. So I'm going to write 1s, and I know that each s orbital can hold two electrons, so I'm just going to write a little superscript 2. After 1s comes 2s. Again, each s orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. After 2s comes 2p. And if you notice in the orbital diagram above, that p sublevel could technically hold up to six electrons. So I'm going to max out at six. And now I have a total of 10 electrons. So I still got to keep going because I've got to get to 18. So check my diagonal rule. After 2p comes 3s. All s's can only hold two electrons. So now I'm up to 12 electrons. After 3s will be 3p, and p's can hold up to 6. So if I count, I've got 2, 4, 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18, and that is the electron configuration for argon. Last example, write the noble gas notation for nickel. So again, find the atomic number for nickel. On the periodic table, it is 28. So that means the number of electrons in an atom of nickel will also be 28. Now, to write the noble gas notation, I need to find the noble gas that is previous to nickel on the periodic table. So if I start counting backwards on the periodic table from 28 to 27 to 26 and so on until I hit the noble gas row, the noble gas I come to is argon. So I'm going to write that in brackets. 
And I also worked out in the previous question that argon has 18 electrons. So everything in this bracket equals 18 electrons. So now I only need to account for 10 more electrons. I ended with 3p6 for argon. So after 3p on my diagonal rule comes 4s. So I'll write that down first. And now I need to account for 8 more electrons. So after 4s comes 3d. Now if you remember from the previous screencast, d orbitals can have five different orientations. And each of those orbitals can hold two electrons. So a d sublevel can actually hold up to 10 electrons. But in this case, I don't need all 10 because I already have the 18 from argon plus two more is 20. I only need eight more. So this will be 3d8. And that is the noble gas notation for nickel.